In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to fix a leaking copper pipe. So stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you could always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So just to give you a quick background, this whole thing was removed because it started to mold because this leak started dripping on top of the drywall. So if you haven't seen that video on how I fixed that mold problem, check out that video right here. It'll greatly help you out on the proper way of abating mold. Looking at this three quarter inch pipe, you see where that the leak is coming from is around here where this joint failed on this corner where this elbow starts. So depending how bad it is, if we can save this elbow and then this T, if not, then we'll go and replace it with a brand new one. I'm gonna be showing you now with two methods on how to replace this piping if you ever come across this situation. Now here are all the tools and equipment that you need to accomplish this project. I'll leave the link on the description down below to make it easier for you to so click on those links if you need any of these. But let's start off with the fuel that we're gonna use. We're gonna be using some propane. What's great about this torch is that when you turn it on, it has a self igniter and you can control and adjust the flame level. You can use map gas, which burns a lot hotter and quicker. So if you're using that, you will need a different torch that is compatible with map gas. So we have this four in one pipe cleaner, which is great. You got three quarter inch, half inch. This is three quarter inch and a half inch cleaner for the outside. But it's good to have is you have a wire brush. Then you need an acid brush. This is the type of flux that we'll be using today. Again, there are many flux out there, but I'll leave the link on the description down below on the different fluxes that you can use. And we have the emery cloth, which is 120 grit sandpaper pretty much. And we have here plumbing solder. Make sure you don't use any electrical solder, or any type of solder, make sure it's specific plumbing solder. I'm gonna be using this channel lock pliers to handle the hot pipe. I have a wet rag right here, which we're gonna be using to wrap around the piping, which I'll show you later on so we don't mess up the solder on other areas. And we're gonna be using this aluminum foil for protection so we don't burn any of the joists or wooden areas around the pipe. And obviously we're gonna be using some personal protection. I got gloves and make sure you have safety glasses. I just wanna give a quick shout out to my friend, Michael Ortiz, for showing me and teaching me some tips and tricks on how to do this project. And the next step that we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn off the water source. So we're gonna have to find that shutoff valve inside the home. We got the main water shutoff valve closed. This is the lowest part of the home. Still gonna be some water, but this will help it reduce some. It has slowed down a little bit, but we'll leave it open. You can tell that the leak is coming from right there. There is a gap right there where the solder has failed. Okay, so I'm gonna heat this up with my torch. But before you do, make sure you wear your eye protection. As you've noticed, I put that flame underneath the piping and still it wasn't disconnecting. The reason for that was is because even though we drained the system from the bottom, there was still standing water left inside that pipe. This was the actual pipe and we ended up cutting in three places. There was still standing water right inside here and up here. So even though we started directing the flame up there, it wasn't getting hot enough for the solder to disconnect. We had no choice, it was pretty much cut off the piping and replace it with press fittings, which I'll show you in the next clip. But before I tell you that, make sure you stay to after I install this so I can show you the proper way to actually weld this if there was no water inside this system. By the way, friends, this press fitting is a lot safer because since this is located up above the ceiling, up above is also a wooden subflooring. It's actually a little dangerous to do that because if you don't have the right cover on there, the fire uh, resistant cover, you could possibly end up burning those wooden areas and there's a possibility of a fire. That's why this press fittings is actually the best way to do it because it's a lot safer and you don't have to work with any flame. I'm gonna be showing you now with two methods on how to replace this piping if you ever come across this situation. So what I used to cut this copper pipe is this close quarters tubing cutter set. It's a three piece by Milwaukee. And once I cut it, I got to see a lot closer where that hole was coming from. Now what I'm gonna be using is this press fittings. Also, you can call them as pro press. Now what's great about this is it doesn't require a flame, which is great because if you're working out there in the industry, you don't need a hot work permit and you don't need to dry off the pipe or drain it out. Well, you still need to drain out, but you don't have to fully drain out completely. You can actually work on this while it is still wet. 
if you were going to go and torch this with your solder you have to wait for everything to dry and fully drain out but in this one you can just test fit everything like what i'm doing right now and as you can see from where that coupling right there you can just all you have to do this is a two and a half divided in half an inch and a quarter so inch and a quarter each side and you should be able to put the two pipes together there is an hydraulic press that you can use that once by milwaukee that i'm using which it comes with many different types of sizes for cartridges to crimp that over so again all you have to do is test fit everything which is great about this press fittings once you get that connection like for this one it's two and a half just get half of that measurement put it on each side test fit it and you're ready to go just make sure that you mark it notice how i'm still working with this and there's still water coming out that's the very great advantage of working with these unlike a flame you can't get it working so i tried using this 90 degree elbow like trying to mimic the old fittings for this pro press but it doesn't seem like it's gonna work it's a little bit more higher piping so i just ended up deleting that and making it into a t and connecting to there so you gotta do what you gotta do it looks like it's crooked right now but right when we press it with the hydraulic press by this one by milwaukee it will straighten out really really well again all you have to do is put it over and it automatically crimps it to the right tightness and it stops from where it reaches to where it's nice and snug and fit and that's pretty much it that's the advantage of using this tool and again it doesn't require flame so you don't risk burning anything it's really clean it looks nice and it's fast as well you don't have to worry about soldering or anything like that notice how clean and it doesn't leak anymore so it looks good plus it's going to be hidden up there once we put the insulation on and the drywall it's completely hidden the most important part is it is not leaking now here's the other method i am using this to show you the second method which is torching it and putting uh, solder you can tell that it starts heating up all the solder is starting to come out so just a tip when you're trying to disconnect a solder connection take a, your wet rag and wrap it around the other joints so that doesn't get affected and that doesn't come off use some kind of clamp this one i'm using my channel lock pliers because this pipe will get really really hot i'm gonna clean up this pipe right here you can use your emery cloth it's okay to have a little bit of solder right there it's totally fine you can use this clean it up like this clean the inside take some flux and put it around this inside of the pipe you're going to take some flux and put it around the pipe like this so here's a little tip when you're soldering only use the amount of the size of the pipe so for example this is a three quarter inch pipe I'm gonna bend this so I know that I'm gonna only gonna be using three quarters length. If it's a half inch, bend it half inch. If it's a one inch, do one inch and so forth. I'm gonna put the torch on the side like this so that when I solder, it doesn't drip inside the torch. You don't wanna solder at the top because the solder won't travel to around the inside of the pipe so you always want to heat up to the bottom so that the solder will travel to where the heat is and will encapsulate the inside so we're going to wait a couple of minutes for this to cool down then once that's cooled we're going to take our wet towel and just wipe off the excess flux you never want to wipe this when it is still hot because when you do the solder on the inside will crack and that will still create a leak so just wait be patient wait for it to cool down and then we can wipe it down Okay, so it's been a couple of minutes. Let's go wipe off the excess flux. There you have it. We have a nice soldered connection. Well, friends, that's how you solder two copper pipes together. Very easy. And if you're interested on any materials, any toolings that I've used within this video, I'll leave all the links on the description down below. If you found big value into this video, please hit that big thumbs up down below. Press the subscribe notification bell. And I'll see you friends on the next video.